Hey everyone, uh, this video is about how to create an Azure Function app that calls an external third-party API. And the objective here is really for the beginner um, how to create this uh, serverless Azure Function and calls a weather API. So I'm just going to use an Azure portal only to uh, build, configure, and write the application c -sharp code. I uh, won't be using any other uh, tools, uh, just to keep it uh, really simple and basic. So I'm going to demonstrate an end-to-end, -end, quick and simple uh, solution. So let's start off with, uh, I have this uh, resource group function at demo. And let's create or search for, for the function app. Click on that, create, uh, select the resource group. So let's, let's give it a name here, RK uh, weather um, uh, app, okay, RK being my initial. So we want to publish it with code, uh, runtime, runtime stack, and .NET. So let's go with six as uh, kind of the default. Uh, because I'm in Canada, I favor uh, the Canada Central Region uh, windows. So plan type uh, consumption uh, is cheaper. Um, I generally recommend app service plan. But let's just for this demo, let's just keep it simple. Uh, next is hosting. So, yeah, storage account, uh, networking, uh, because I want this to be internet facing, we go enable public access. Uh, do not want to inject it into any uh, virtual network. Uh, just make it kind of kind of stand on its own from a networking perspective. Monitoring, uh, I generally uh, recommend it. So you can see kind of performance metrics. Let's just, let's just create a new one here. Go to deployment. Uh, so I'm not gonna use anything with GitHub actions. Just gonna skip over this and uh, review and create. So deployment in progress so now the uh, deployment is complete let's go to the resource itself and so there's my URL app service plan okay so here uh, we have functions so we can create um, many functions or HTTP or endpoints So uh, in this situation, I want to develop uh, in the portal because I want to keep it uh, simple and I just you not know, doing, you know, really simple code. So I don't want to go through, you know, uh, using VS code, um, just using more tools. So uh, because I want this to be an HTTP uh, endpoint and triggered by as an HTTP request, let's say from the browser, I create select the HTTP trigger template. And then that's created. And then we have these options, code and test, integration, monitor, and function keys. So we go here to code and test. And we got some, you know, basic kind of sample code. We'll take a query string of name and uh, take the response and display it. So let's test this out. So get function URL. Okay, that's the default. And we, we have right here, this HTTP uh, triggered function executed successfully. 
pass a name in the query string or in the request body. So I can try that here. So uh, name equals, let's say, Roy and then ampersand and then uh, here's the code is really the kind of the uh, function key which is kind of uh, for uh, a very simple kind of means of kind of securing that function so do that so yeah hello Roy this HTTP triggered executed successfully okay so let's let's take this and um, adapt it to use a uh, weather API. So the weather API I use is uh, weather stack .com. Uh, you can uh, check it check it out. I uh, use the free version kind of log in and you will get an API key. okay So let's see here let's bring over kind of uh, the code so the first thing you need is because we're doing a HTTP call to uh, an external API uh, we need the HTTP clients okay the .NET HTTP client so we need to add uh, the assembly for that okay system.net.htp okay and then we need a the using statement to uh, use that assembly okay uh, so we have access to that and I'm just gonna go ahead and also we have for my uh, weather API, it comes with uh, an API key so that uh, I just don't want anybody else uh, to use it. So we have that. And so in my function app or function, I want to have a query string parameter of supporting location. So, but in this case, I just want to have a default location, which is kind of where I reside. And I want a query string parameter of location instead of name. And because we have this kind of uh, uh, iLogger kind of log, uh, let's use that. And log kind of the the location okay so let's so once we uh, log that uh, I want to get the query string parameter and put it into this uh, string uh, variable so uh, check if uh, location is uh, is null or empty actually I need to set that there okay or if it's null or empty then I revert to my default location city or country okay so I'm just gonna paste the rest of the code in here So, so here is where I create the HTTP client object, okay, and then pass in the URL to uh, get a, a uh, get a sync, pass in the URL, and I get that HTTP response. So I got to handle the HTTP response because uh, it comes in JSON format, but I want to put into a dynamic uh, object and to, uh, deserialize that, and then ultimately. Uh, get the uh, response message that I want to output to uh, that I'll output uh, from this function or it'll show up kind of in the browser so if it's successful 
and there's a JSON object, then I'm going to state that this HTTP trigger function executed successfully. The weather stock stack J JSON response is, and then I present the JSON um, uh, output from the weather stack API uh, as such. So I'm going to save that, test and run. Okay, we can just test it. Uh, this is a get method. Okay, uh, keep that there. Uh, not going to use this. Okay, let's hit run. And so there we go. This HTTP triggered function executed successfully. And though in this JSON string, we can see the current temperature is minus seven degrees Celsius, which sounds about right. So, but let's say if we want to add a query string parameter and go location <coughs> and say, let's say Calgary, Canada, hit run. And we get Calgary, see the Calgary, and it is um, the temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is yeah, pretty cold. Uh, to test this, and then we can see down here kind of the logging information, right? So, right here we can see uh, the URL. That I wanted to output into into the log, as well as uh, these other statements here, request location, and we got Calgary, Canada as the query string parameter. So that's good. So let's see here. Let's get function URL, and uh, let's oops, run that. And so we have here. Uh, same same output so that worked okay so uh, the key thing uh, I want to point out with this code is that uh, when I was googling for kind of you know some sample code uh, there's many different uh, examples and variations and it wasn't compatible so one thing is you know to get the uh, right assembly and reference that and just getting the right kind of syntax on this. So um, uh, you can find the code in my uh, GitHub, uh, github.com slash Roy Kim YYZ. Uh, you'll see that. I'll leave that in the uh, link to, uh, to that repo in my description. Okay, and the last thing I want to show is that, well, if I want to make this completely anonymous because it requires the code parameter right so if I do that it's 401 okay so the way to do that is we we'll go to integration uh, to make it uh, anonymous and not require that code go to uh, trigger and function authorization is anonymous hit save Okay, and let's let's do that again. So yeah, we got that again. Uh, test out the path where you go location. This time we can say uh, New York City, and got that. Temperature is plus six. And that makes sense. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, just to get. A uh, quick and easy way of setting up end to end to call a third party API. And thanks for watching.